Hey there, gang. Time for another unboxing, or or actually just a heads up. This is part two of the last unboxing. Uh, it took me about 50 some odd minutes to go through that whole uh, box because I, again, I get chatty, like to tell stories and, uh, you know, comment on the books. And uh, so I have split the video in two and uh, we, will, uh, we will now pick up where we left off with the back half of this box. So stick around. We're going to have some fun. All right, time, time for a new stack. And here we have a Marvel Atlas book before the advent of the Marvel heroes. Strange Tales number 70. Here comes the ghost ship and when wakes the Sphinx. And what do we have here? Cindy, A-L-T-I-M-O-S-E, Altimos is her name, and then David Holt, Holter, is also written on here, as well as the address, 5802 Washburn, <laughs> QT Pie, with a little heart, <laughs> all the things kids used to do to their comic books, you know, to me, that that's kind of worth buying it just just for the charm of, of that. You know, to me, sometimes the, the graffiti on a book actually enhances it. The Zebra Batman. So there's something to send you into a little bit of an epileptic seizure there. <laughs> Catman! Gotta love some Catman. Oh, nice. This is a one-shot book. The Captain Marvel book lasted, I think, only about five issues. And then there was also this one-shot, Captain Marvel Presents the Terrible Five. So Captain Marvel, uh, this version... So I told you before that Captain Marvel uh, kind of faded away in the mid-50s, around 54 or so, partly due to the downturn in the market. Fawcett stopped publishing comic books, partly because of that ongoing lawsuit. And so back then, you didn't really retain trademark or anything like that comic books you know were like newspapers they were printed once and that was it that was the end of them uh and so it came to this fella myron fass was the uh, publisher of uh, of this book and some other short-lived series around this time who realized that certain titles had some marketability. So he used the captain marvel name but created a whole new character but he didn't create it he actually, um, uh, Burgos, I believe, the fellow who created the Human Torch, was the one who created uh, this version of Captain Marvel. And so this Captain Marvel, instead of yelling Shazam, he would yell Split, and his arms and legs would all fly off. <laughs> let's, let's see if we can see it in here. Yeah, look at that. Split! <laughs> and his arms and legs go flying in all directions. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh that's what that was all about split <laughs> and everything goes flying <laughs> his head pops off the arms the legs he was an android i believe so that's not as gross as it might seem it's not like you know arm fall off boy but uh <laughs> anyway that's another thing that's you know charming af you, you gotta have it this the heap the Heap was um, a kind of a primordial version of Swamp Thing or Man Thing, uh, published by Hillman Periodicals in the Golden Age. Skywald Comics came out in the 70s. It was a short-lived publisher. Weird, weird logo, I always thought, this, this lamppost thing. But um, I don't know if there's an all-new Heap. Or if they were reprinting Heap stories, or what? If they, like Myron Fast, were just reusing the name? No, these look like reprints. That looks more like 50s and 40s than something that would have been drawn in the 70s. Well, that first story looks modern. I don't know. I'll have to look it up, see if the, how much of this is original, how much is reprints that, that you know he may or may not even have had the rights to. <laughs> So that was cool. 
Oh, sweet. Sweet, sweet ass sweet. Fat Man, The Human Flying Saucer. Now that's a book that you definitely want. And look at this. Featuring, oh, Anti-Man. I thought it was Ant-Man. Uh, Tin Man. Introducing Tin Man, Teenage Hero. <laughs> Written and drawn by the creators of the original Captain Marvel, O.O. Binder and C.C. Beck. So Otto Binder, I guess I didn't know his middle name started with an O as well. So yeah, Fat Man could turn into a flying saucer and fight crime. <laughs> That's another book you have got to have. You, you, must, you must have this. Look at that. Fat Man meets Tin Man. There he is. Look at the little eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is funny. <laughs> oh, Fat Man has to be in the public domain today. Somebody has to do a Fat Man book. Bring back Fat Man. By golly, that would be fun. Especially if DC could see their way fit to moving the Fawcett characters back to you know, Earth S their own world continuity. They had their own kind of innocent charm. Um, they ought to jump on Fat Man and join him to that universe. This is a Harvey comic book. Unearthly Spectaculars, starring Jack Q. Frost, the coolest hero in comics. So, it's a short-lived uh, Harvey superhero for you. What do you think of that? We're back to World's Finest now. Amazing Spider-Man 195, so the second appearance of the Black Cat. 188, here's a uh, direct early direct sales version. Captain Marvel in Marvel Spotlight number one. These bags are kind of stuck together. Here's another one. These are both newsstand copies. This one has some Oh, luckily that's just on the bag. But uh, that, that is the first appearance of the Tarantula, who I always thought was pretty ridiculous because his only attack is to kick with those spikes in his boots. Here's some Green Goblin action, 137, 138. 186, another early uh, direct sales version. Here's a newsstand version of the first uh, Wolverine miniseries, the number one. That'll do well. That's like a $50, $60 book. Yeah, fairly high grade. That looks in the bag anyway like it might be at least an eight. And a newsstand version. And here's another Spider-Woman number one. Here's another, another Spider-Woman number one. So you know where to go. Usually once I uh, grade these books up, it's usually within a week or so when they will appear on eBay. And you know where to go to get your uh, Spider-Woman books. Transformers, and you know, <laughs> it says mint on the bag. <laughs> well, obviously not. Look at all those spine techs. But, you know, I don't see uh, Transformers number one in high grade very often. But that's a book that was really purchased by just regular old random kids um, who were not collectors. John Carter, Warlord of Mars, number one. Miracle Man, number one, from Eclipse. So, you know, we've been talking about Shazam and Captain Marvel. And so if you don't know, over in the United Kingdom, they reprinted Captain Marvel comic books from Fawcett and when Fawcett went out of business they wanted to continue you know their books were selling they didn't want to get out of the uh, Captain Marvel business but because Captain Marvel went away they created this new character called um, Marvel Man and so Marvel Man ran for many years in the United Kingdom and so in the uh, 80s uh, Eclipse relaunched the character here in the States as Miracle Man. They couldn't really get away with calling him Marvel Man because of Marvel Comics, but this is a good book. Marvel Tales, T-A-I-L-E-S. I believe that's the first appearance of Peter Porker. 
the spectacular spider ham and we've got two and it's a newsstand copy which 60 cents that's mid 80s by by this time we're reaching about parity where you know about half of the sales of any given issue of a comic book are coming from the direct sales the comic book stores half from the newsstand and from this point forward it would uh, it would drop and drop and drop that by like 87 88 newsstand sales were about 30 percent or so by 1990 they were only about 15 percent by 1995 it was only about 10 percent so you know you get a newsstand copy of a 90s book and you know you can get really a premium several times over the regular edition it's almost kind of the same multiplier as having a CGC graded book. And then what you really want is, you know, from the end of the newsstand era, around 2012, 2013, when the books that were selling on the newsstand, and at this point it's mostly just DC, the newsstand copies were a dollar more than the same books that were sold in the comic book stores. Those are super rare because nobody would buy them. <laughs> There's Devil Dinosaur number one. Booster Gold number one. Look at that. They only wanted 250 for it. We're definitely going to get more than 250 for this. It's not a high grade book. I see several ticks here on the spine. Might be a seven. Seven five maybe. But that'll be a $20 book. Here is Star Wars number one. Now, Star Wars is tricky, and I'll have to look this up. But I believe. This is this is the reprint, um, obviously because it says reprint, but you had some versions, well, you had the version that sold on the newsstand, you had the version that was sold on the Whitman three packs, then you had another, like two or three different versions of the uh, Whitman book, and then there was an actual second printing. And so I'll have to look up and see exactly what that is. This is another one, the same thing. Here's another one of that award-winning cover. Spider-Man versus Wolverine. To me, that's a dollar book, but that does well. That'll sell for 10 or 12 bucks. First, Archangel in X-Factor 24. Crisis on Infinite Earths, number one. Alpha Flight, number one. For a long time, that was like a $5 book max, but uh, it's been going for more lately, as really everything is. And here's a newsstand copy, so you can see the difference. You see the different kind of pricing logo here, and then you've got, rather or not, it has the UPC code. Because at this time, most comic book stores, I mean, it was, you know, <laughs> they were run by fanboys, you know, working out of a shoebox for a cash register. They didn't have scanners, and so, uh, you know, you didn't have the UPC code, but on the newsstand, the grocery stores. And here's another direct sales copy. So those will do well. That's, you know, that's getting to be a $15, $20 book now. Here's the first part of the classic Days of Future Past story. This cover, I mean, this just absolutely blew my mind when I was a kid, this cover. Especially because, I mean, I knew right away that it took place in the future because you could tell because of the gray. But I also, John Byrne was so good, I recognized this as an older Kitty Pride. And of course, back at this time, I was probably maybe 11 or 12. I had kind of a crush on Kitty Pride. I'm not afraid to admit. <laughs> so I'm, I'm very anxious to see who, uh, who plays her in the MCU when uh, Feige gets around to introducing all the mutants. I'll, you know, I'll feel like a pedophile at this point, but... Rom Space Knight, that's a good book. Oops, look at that. Colossal Boy got so excited, he just fell right over ass over tea kettle. Uh, so that was based on a toy. The book lasted longer than the toy. The toy didn't really do much, um, other than beep and make lights and stuff. And, uh, but uh, the book by Bill Mantlo lasted, what, 75 issues or so? Uh, and so that's cool. I have a ROM number one, but I want a ROM action figure. And it was a big action figure. It was like a 14-incher or something like that. You know, it wasn't like these, you know, 8-inch Mego figures. Although, to me, this is the gold standard for action figures. Uh, 
I would love a ROM Space Knight, an actual the toy. If you see one anywhere, let me know. And I believe this is the first appearance of um, Legion, or is it Warlock? No, I think it's Legion, or maybe it's Warlock. I don't know. It's Bill. Bill. <laughs> I think his name is pronounced Sinkiewicz, but as a kid, I always pronounced it Sinkowitz. <laughs> So, I wasn't a very smart kid. <laughs> uh, Fantastic Four 211, first appearance of Terax the Tamer. Some speculation on that book. I don't know where the rumor started, but there's some belief that he will be the Herald of Galactus if, if and when a Fantastic Four movie ever gets made. So, oh wow. This is, I think this is a 30 cent price variant. So... Along about the time the books were 25 cents, they test marketed 30 cents in various areas across the country. So these 30 cent ones uh, are pretty low. And actually, it looks like they're, yeah, it does say 30 cent price variant, and they're all taped together. Um, they're low circulation because they were only really tested in just a few cities to see if uh, kids would, in fact, Pay 30 cents. There's another one. It's kind of a, a, a ripple to these books. I hope that's not water damage. I don't know. This is also during the short period, three or four issues, when um, Power Man, Luke Cage, joined the Fantastic Four. So there you go. There are those price variants. The return of Jean Grey, who had been dead for, oh, I don't know, seven, eight, ten years. There's some uh, all new, all different X Men, number 108, number 114. This is during the reprint era, number 88. Here's an Iron Man, early Iron Man, number 7. That's cool. What do we have here in the box? Stuck into the side here, so it looks like it was a book that was too big for the box, or at least the backing board was too big. This is a kind of a Ooh, low grade, but that is Target Comics. That's a Golden Age book. And even though he has a big old target on his chest, his name is The Cadet. Featuring The Cadet. Volume 5, number 2. I'm not sure what the whole number was here. And uh, it looks like it's in pretty rough shape. But we'll see how that grades up. All right, next stack. Looks to me like we're going to get a little run of Bronze Age Marvel here. And we have uh, Iron Man number 10, number 12, 15 with the Unicorn and the Red Ghost, 16, just the Unicorn, 17, the beginning of the end, 19, Iron Man number 20, 21, Old Shellhead's quitting. He's had enough. 22 against Crimson Dynamo and the Titanium Man. 28, the controller. 32. Number 35, Scorpio. I think that's uh, what's going on here. Co starring Daredevil and Nick Fury. Number 36, number 40, now we are into Captain Marvel number 7, number 8, 9, number 10, fun cover, 11, number 12, 16, didn't we see some of these earlier? 17, so this is the first one with the new costume by Gil Kane. And uh, this is when Marvell became merged with Rick Jones, who was serving originally the sidekick to the Hulk, became sidekick to Captain America. He played Bucky Barnes for a while. And then he and Captain Marvel became linked. They had these nega bands, and whenever they slapped the bands together, they would trade places. One of them would kind of go into limbo, and the other one would be uh, 
out here among the living. All right, well, let's keep on trucking. Some more Captain Marvel, number 18, 19, there's number 20. Another copy of number 17, not quite as nice as the last one we saw. Spidey number 192, 199. Back to Captain Marvel again, another 19. So this uh, Captain America number 110, that's a big old Android Hulk. This is the issue where Rick Jones becomes the new Bucky for a short time. Here's a Jim Steranko classic cover. And again, it's often browned up like this. It's hard to find a, a nice white cover. Number 112, 114, 116 with the Avengers. 119, so I think that's like about the third appearance of the Falcon, who had a different costume at this time. Crack up on campus around this time. Stan Lee, uh, when he was touring college campuses, every, every book had a college protest story. Captain Mar uh, Captain Marvel, Captain America versus the Man Brute versus the Scorpion. We're getting down to it, folks. We got maybe one, two more stacks. Two more stacks, and that is that. Some more Captain America, Bronze Age, 15 centers. The Falcon Returns, 127, 128, 129 against the Red Skull, 133. Marvel Superhero Secret Wars number 12. These usually don't sell that well, except for, you know, number one, number eight, of course, with the origin of the black suit, and kind of seven to a lesser degree. There's that spider woman who never really became anything and is no longer a character, but some people will still buy it, think it's a thing. They'll get, I don't want to say tricked from us, but tricked by some people into thinking it's a, a key worth buying. Silver Surfer number two, Silver Surfer number five, when that, that big old E is all about. Number eight, number nine, number ten. Oh, look what somebody did. What an asshole. <laughs> they colored in. They took a green marker, probably because this building is green, colored in some of the letters, colored in that P, that's kind of random for whatever reason. And then apparently they were offended by uh, Silver Surfer's nakedness and uh, felt the need to put some shorts on him. <laughs> uh, here's Human Torch. Mephisto. And I think we got two issues here. Number 18 again, that's the last issue. I think we saw that earlier in this box. I can't remember. It was so long ago that we started this box. <laughs> long ago my time. I'm pretty sure I will have divided this video into two parts. But let us pull out the last stack. And we've got a lovely DC 100-page Super Spectacular of Detective Comics. Nice square spine. The DC 100-page Super Spectaculars tended to come off the press a little better than the giant-sized Marvel books, which are notorious for having the spines all crushed in. So there you go. This, I believe, is the first appearance of the Black Mask. It's 1985, so that's up there. Uh, <laughs> Captain Universe, first appearance. Micronauts number 8. This is another book people continue to buy thinking it's a thing, but um, Captain, I mean, and I love the Micronauts series, don't get me wrong, I encourage you to buy the Micronauts, at least the first dozen issues, it's a great read, but issue 8 here, um, Captain Universe never really turned out to be a thing, and so there's really no reason for that to be, you know, any, to, to, to command any higher price than any other 
issue of the run. Here's Thor uh, 364 with this first Frog Thor, I forget his name. Here he is again. Uh, Incredible Hulk 377, that is the first appearance of the Professor Hulk, basically the version of the Hulk that was in the Endgame movie. Spawn number two. That's a big deal. You see a lot of number ones. You don't see nearly as many number twos. Oh, God. Knocked over Colossal Boy again. He was just so blown away by that spawn number two. Amazing Spider-Man uh, Annual 22. First appearance of Speedball. And this is another one that, you know... Well, he was a thing for a short while. He's part of the New Warriors. But the New Warriors themselves haven't appeared in forever. But this was uh, Steve Ditko in here, I believe. Part or most of it. Year one, part one. That's uh, that'll that'll do well. There's a wedding issue. It's not in very good shape, but that's the newsstand version of the wedding issue. Warlock number fourteen. And last but not least, and we this was we saw this very near the beginning of this box, or in the last video, depending on how I cut this up. Uh, Black Lightning number one. This one isn't quite as nice as the last one we saw but still that will do well and that's a good book I encourage you to get this Black Lightning series it's only 11 issues that whole series you ought to be able to put it together pretty easily but that's something worth having but that's it that's the end of that box we finally made it to the end despite my uh, <laughs> my running on and on and on and on and on but I thank you very much. Please do come back next time for another unboxing. And until then, goodbye, good luck, and please be good to each other.